Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, focaccia alla molisana. Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Welcome to Italy, and let's cook real Italian. Aren't they gorgeous? Swiss chard. I knew you said that. I'm in heaven. Think about how healthy this is. That's for you. Sunday sauce. All 20 regions of Italy are fabulous. And every time I do this, I think of my Nonna Galasso because she always made it this way. You want a Goldilocks dough, just right. Who doesn't like basil, especially in the summer? Obviously, you have to have pesto sauce at some point, right? I mean, I'm a cook. Why can't I try it? You're the best. No, you're the best. been to Tuscany? Raise your hand. How many of you have been to Lazio, where Rome is? Raise your hand. How many of you have been to the Veneto? Venice, raise your hand. That's a lot of people. But how many of you have ever been right here in this little region of Molise? Yeah, this is the second smallest region in Italy. You know what? At one time, it used to be connected to Abruzzo. But around 1963, they separated. However, the cooking of Molise and Abruzzo are very, very similar. And today, we are going to cook a focaccia molisana style in the style of Molise. And the reason I took you on that little tour of the map is because you're saying, what? Focaccia? Yes. And focaccia is different in every region of Italy, from the north to the south. They make it very differently. So let me show you how we have to start. We're going to start with some flour. So here's my little lesson about flour because I get a lot of notes from you people who say, you know what, I did it exactly the way you said and it came out like a rock. Well, you know, you may not be measuring correctly because in Italy everything is done by weight. But we don't work that way here in the States. So if you don't have a scale, and you don't measure that way, then you want to do what's called the sprinkle and sweep method. So you get a dry measure measuring cup, not a glass measuring cup, because glass measures are for liquids. Plastic and metal are for dry things like flour. So we want to just go into the flour bag or the canister and lightly sprinkle that flour into your measuring cup. So instead of digging into a bag of flour with your measuring cup, which would give you much more flour than you need, you should do this. So this is the sprinkle and sweep method. And the sweep method part of this is taking a knife and sweeping off the excess on the top. So there's three cups of flour. Then we need a pinch of salt. And mix that around a little bit. And then we need liquid with this. This is not a yeast dough. So we want about a half a cup of a good extra virgin olive oil. So let me measure out about a half a cup. That looks good. Half a cup goes in. And then we need some wine, about a half a cup. I keep saying about because it may not take all that I need. So. Let's put that in and see where we are. I'm going to add a little bit at a time. OK. Now, you have to get into that with your hands. And you want to make a dough. This is more like a, a pastry dough. And it's not a risen dough, so it's going to have a very different taste and texture to it. So you add the liquid just a little bit at a time until you get to that stage where you have something that you can take out onto a board and knead. So you can always correct this by adding more liquid or less or more flour depending on what you need. That's starting to feel good, but it still needs a little bit more liquid. So let me put that in and give it a good turn. 
Now, I had this kind of focaccia when I was in Molise. I give that just a little bit more wine, I think. We were actually filming in the region of Molise a few years ago. We we're in a pasta factory, and we were filming how they make pasta seca or dried pastas. And the food of Molise is very simple. Just home cooking at its simplest with the ingredients that you find indigenous to that area. All right, so this is looking good. Just maybe a drop more, and then I'm gonna take it out. I don't wanna give that too much moisture because I don't want to have a dough that's too floury either. All right, when it cleans the bowl, and oh, by the way, you could do this in a food processor if you wanted to. You put it on a board. Preferably, you're working on a wood surface because that gives you much better grab. And you take that dough and you work it. Work it into a ball until it's somewhat smooth. Now, originally, instead of using the olive oil in this, this was made with lard. Yep, lard, which gave it a kind of a flaky consistency. But given the health concerns that people have about lard, and even if you were to use lard, you'd have to render it yourself because where do you find it? I know you can buy lard in the grocery store, but it just isn't the same thing. I remember my grandmother's always making lard and using it for pastry to make the best pastry crust. So you work the dough with your hands until you're satisfied that it looks nice and even, and then you just let it rest for about 15 minutes because we have to make a filling for this. This is, as I say, a double crusted pie, or focaccia, as it's known in Molise. Okay, looks good to me. So we will just cover that with a bowl and let that rest while we make the filling. So this is a beautiful head of escarol, also known as scarola, and you can see it's a very compact head of chicory. So this can be eaten raw. I often put this in a salad. Or it can be stuffed. Sometimes you just open up the inner leaves and you stuff it with breadcrumbs and raisins, cheese, and then you braise it in a pan. It's delicious. But it's also going to be great as a filling for our focaccia. So the first thing you do is wash it all. Make sure you get into the little grooves and everything because there's a lot of dirt. And then you steam it just in its own the, own, the water that's clinging to the leaves. You don't add any extra water. And people always say to me, well, isn't it bitter? Yep, but that's escarol. So if you want to boil it to death, you go right ahead. That isn't going to change the bitterness of it. And guess what? It's going to leach out all those beautiful vitamins. So it's better that you just put it in a pan with the leaves clinging to the, with the water clinging to the leaves, put a cover on it, and let it wilt down. When it's wilted down, it'll look like this, see? So then you want to really squeeze it dry because you really don't want to put something that's super wet into a dough. It's going to be soggy. So this is well squeezed. And now all we really want to do is coarsely chop it because we're going, to, we're going to mix this with other ingredients as well. So this was about a pound and a half of escarol. Now, if you didn't want to use escarol for this recipe, you absolutely detest escarol, well, then you could use spinach or Swiss chard, something like that. But I'm trying to stay true to the recipe. So give it a very coarse chop. And that's all you have to do. And you want to set that aside then and start with the other ingredients that are going to flavor the escarol. All right, let me tell you what goes into this filling. So we're going to start with some fresh garlic. You know, I know people in Italy who, they don't even take the papers off the garlic. They say, you know, it's part of the flavor, so they just throw it in. I have to get used to doing that, but I always take the papers off anyway. So a nice hefty clove of garlic, mash it down, and just give it a mince. And then with this, we are going to have, let me give you a little taste tour, some black olives. We've got some anchovies, some capers, raisins, pine nuts, and then we're gonna add some cheese, all going in with that escrow. Oh, I forgot. 
and this little guy, yeah. Lots of this in Malise cooking. So get your garlic going in some olive oil. So I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to my saute pan. All right, I'm just gonna eyeball that. That looks like a couple tablespoons. Throw in the garlic. And then you chop up all the other stuff. You gotta watch that garlic though, because that really burns. I'm gonna turn that down now until I get this, all this other stuff ready. So here are the olives. And you can use oil cured olives or brined olives. Just give them a coarse chop. This is gonna give a nice different flavor taste to this focaccia. There's a lot of different flavors going on in this focaccia. But Molise is a real gem because it has a tradition that I absolutely love called the transumana. The transumana, yes. And what is that? Well, I'll tell you in a minute, as soon as I stir this around. Get a spoon, get that going in the olive oil. And then with that, we want some anchovy in olive oil. I'm gonna take all of those, because I like anchovy, and just give them a coarse chop. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so that goes in. Anchovies in. Capers are in. We're going to flavor this now with some salt. Not too much, because those anchovies have salt in them. And then, gotta wipe my hands, we need to put in that little red pepper. See this little red pepper here? Let me show you how that goes. I have my trusty little gadget here. So these are peppers that I grew in my garden. And if you're in southern Italy, I don't care if it's Molise or where you are, this is something that's really central to the cuisine. Lots of chili peppers. So I'm just going to pulverize that up. Put in as much as you like. Some people like a lot. Yeah, that's enough. In it goes, little chili pepper. Okay, good. Now I'm going to add the pine nuts. Pine nuts come from the stone pine tree. They're really hard to extract. That's why they're so expensive. So you put those in and move that around. If you see that your pan is a little dry, you could give it some extra virgin olive oil or I'm not gonna waste this. This is the oil from the anchovies. That's gonna go right in there. Hey, cooking's all about using your head, right? Okay, now I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit here because we've got our garlic soft and get that all mixed. And the other thing we need to put in are some raisins or you could use currants. So here are some raisins. Just gonna throw those in. Get that mixed around. Mm. Now you can start to see that this is gonna have a lot of flavor. Now we can dump this in here to flavor the escarole. We're gonna put it back in that bowl, but I wanna flavor it in the pan. And then we have to allow this to cool down before we put it into the dough that we still have to roll out. Remember that our dough is now resting. We'll get that all mixed together. Mm, beautiful. All right, now I'm going to let that go for a couple minutes while we grate the cheese. And the cheese that we're using is Parmigiano Reggiano, a cow's milk cheese from Emilia. So we're gonna grate this cheese on our cheese grater. And when you are using a cheese like this, you wanna make sure that you only buy enough that you're going to use, let's say, within a month's time because the cheese can start to dry out. And then whatever you're not using, 
and you want to make sure you're grating the cheese at room temperature because it's a lot easier. When you're done grating and you have cheese left over, you want to make sure that you wrap it really well in some plastic wrap. See? Very tightly in some plastic wrap. So I'm going to put that back in the fridge. So we have our Parmigiano Reggiano cow's milk cheese, a DOP cheese that can only be made in five provinces. One of those is Parma, after which the cheese is named. The other is Reggio Emilia, Modena, Mantua. So in goes the filling into a bowl. And we're going to allow that cheese, uh, that uh, filling to kind of come to room temperature. We don't want to put it in hot. So here is our cheese. We add the grated Parmigiano Reggiano and mix that in. Beautiful. It smells wonderful. Okay, and then we can set this aside while we work on the dough. Okay, we got to get serious now. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with the dough. So it's relaxed a bit. You see it's a little softer than it was when I started. So we want to divide this in half because, as I said, this is a two-crusted focaccia, which is a little different than making focaccias elsewhere in Italy. All right, so we want to flatten that dough down a bit. And then on a floured surface, I'm going to add a little flour. Not too much, just to keep the dough from sticking. So you put it on your floured surface, and then you want to roll it out with your rolling pin. You know, I started to tell you the story about the transumanza. I love that word. And it's unique to Molise, because what it means is across land. And it is the annual kind of migration of the shepherds and the cowboys, if you will, who take their animals, sheep, goats um, and, and cows to different pasture lands. So, you know, they move them from in the spring to higher elevations where they graze on different grasses. And this was a tradition that is still ongoing in Molise, but it's not as prevalent as it used to be because the younger people just aren't doing this same kind of thing. But it's, it's very dear to the hearts of many Molisani. So, the transumanza. And when we were in Molise, we actually stayed at what is called a masseria. A masseria is like an, an inn, because the, the cowboys and the sheep herders would take their cattle and their sheep, and they would follow these certain tracks certain paths, and along the paths would be places for them to stay. In the old days, they stayed outside. No matter what the weather was, they just stayed outside. But now, later on, they could stay in the masseria, and the masseria was like an inn, a place where they stayed. And our crew stayed in a masseria when we were in Molise, so that was a, a really interesting experience. Okay, about 12 inches will do it, and you see how nice this rolled out. So we want to take it and place it on a sheet of parchment paper. Open it up. And then I place it right on a bake sheet before I put the filling on, because otherwise it's all going to fall apart. Then we put that on the bake sheet. And now we can roll out the second piece of dough. Very pliable very easy to do. So going again with the idea of Molise, here is a region that's so little known to tourists. You know, you owe it to yourself to think about maybe going on a trip to Italy and spending some time in Molise, just a very simple area, not overly populated, with simple foods like the cheeses and the and the pork and the lamb and gorgeous vegetables that look almost like porcelain. I remember one day we went out when we were staying in a masseria to a, an asparagus patch. And they were growing lots of asparagus there. And we made a beautiful frittata using the asparagus from Molise. It was absolutely delicious. 
Did I say the pasta's terrific too? Wonderful dried pastas. Okay, this is looking good. Now, we wanna get our filling. So here's our filling. We're gonna spread that right over our dough. I need longer arms. Okay. Just spread it down. You're gonna have your oven on at 375 degrees, preheated. Press this down, but leave, leave a, an area that's free because you're gonna put the second sheet of dough over the top. Make sure it's kind of even all the way around. Think about how healthy this is too. Okay, that's looking good. Now, we're gonna take this sheet of dough and plop it right over the top, just like that. And then you want to seal those edges. So what I do is just pinch those edges closed all the way around, because you don't want any of that filling, really, to seep out. So go all the way around, and then for extra insurance, I just take a fork and go around as if I'm doing crimping a pie dough, see? Just go all the way around. And it should be a rustic pie. You could do this in a springform pan if you didn't want to do it freeform. You could do it in a springform pan or in a cake pan. All right, now we need to put a little snip right there. A little snip, and we need to beat up an egg. Give this a little bit of an egg wash. So mix up the egg. And just brush the top of it. This is gonna give it a nice glazed look. Now this is something that can be, it can be supper, it can be a luncheon, it could be an antipasto cut into small wedges. But whatever you choose to serve it as, it's going to be delicious. And it's best served warm. Now make sure you get that egg wash everywhere, all along the edges as well. I think our friends Luigi and Alessia would be so proud that we made this focaccia. Those were the, our hosts in Molise. Okay, it's ready. So, we're gonna pop this baby right into the oven, guys. Okay. Timer. And now we wait. The little region of Molise produces some really tasty dishes. And one of them is this great looking and great tasting focaccia. Remember we started with a pastry dough and then we filled it with escarole, pine nuts, anchovies, raisins, olive oil, cheese, and baked it in the oven. Great as a lunch dish or supper. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao.